been slipping back, dead in south, car sick on a Tuesday, missing cash, blacking out, heartless in a few ways, shit for luck, elbow shredded, I help things steady like too late, please calm the fuck down, I'll do whatever you say, I get it, I get it, I'm living too hard and it's time that I stop it. What's going on everybody? My name is Matt and welcome to Downshift. Today I have one of the more exciting options in the world of small SUVs. This is the BMW X3 M40i. Now this X3 is brand new for 2018 and one thing that you'll notice is the BMW is staying with their classic angel eyes. However, they are a little bit more geometric uh, than in previous years. I happen to think that it suits this car especially well with a more aggressive and sporty stance and demeanor. Uh, the more geometric and kind of hexagonal look to them adds to that kind of sport. Uh, Excuse me while I... Yeah. <laughs> Additionally, below the grill are kind of like uh, the little, I guess you can call them intakes, but the little scoops in the, in the front bumper. Um, but they actually look quite nice. Differentiating them from the normal X3 would be the little kind of black slatting in between. Uh, to differentiate them from the center of the bumper, uh, giving them kind of like a curled effect. It looks just a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more mean, turned up a little bit. Uh, of course, you have your side gills on the side of the car. Uh, this is very, you know, M4, 4 Series, um, kind of similar look to it, just adds to another kind of, you know, it looks like an air extractor. Uh, it's of course non-functional, but it is very, very aggressive looking. Also aggressive, looking are, my tester has the 19 inch wheels, but 20 inch wheels are optional and they look fan-freaking-tastic. They have ex exceptional uh, blue brake calipers uh, sticking out from behind them. Of course, they're painted and they've got the M on them. There are four pistons up front uh, and then one piston in the rear. Um, and speaking of the rear, I have to say that I absolutely love the redesigned taillights. The, they have a beautiful LED strip uh, and just below them are some really kind of interesting shaped exhaust outputs. Uh, the tips are not, they're not really rectangular, they're not rhomboidal, um, but they have a nice shape to them. It's very unique and the best thing about them, pop pops. <laughs> This exhaust, this is the main thing that you need to know about this car. This exhaust is super loud. This, well, for this car, it's super fast, by the way. Um, but you get a really, really engaging sound from the exhaust, and you get nice little pop pops when you let off uh, in sport mode only, though. You can turn it on to Eco, that'll do away with the pop pops. Uh, it pretty much does it anytime you rev over 3000 RPM and let off the gas. Uh, you get a nice little pop pop. I'll show you right here. Rev. I hope you can hear that. I can hear it here. <laughs> so I do want to talk about the ride of this car. This started life obviously as a normal uh, family cruiser. This is, you know, a small SUV. It's meant to get your kids to school, get groceries home, uh, and everything like that. But, um, you know, so it's, it, stay, it maintains a kind of comfortable ride there. Um, but also when you put it into sport mode, the, the, adapt, the dampers kind of tighten up, uh, the transmission sharpens up, and everything kind of dials up into a more sporty, sporty feel. Obviously this firms up the suspension, the ride gets a little bit stiffer. However, it's not what you would call uncomfortable by any means. Additionally, when everything does firm up and tighten up into sport mode, you feel really planted. There is a little bit of body roll because this is, you know, a taller uh, center of gravity being an SUV and such. Um, but with your, if you put your seat down a little bit, you obviously can adjust the height of your seat. Uh, you don't feel it as much. Um, also, there's a huge panoramic sunroof that I'm sure you guys can see. Uh, that adds a little weight up top so you get a little bit extra lean. But overall, extremely planted in corners, very nice suspension and handling from an SUV like this. Additionally, front passengers aren't the only people that have amenities and comforts. Uh, the rear seat legroom is fantastic, and the headroom is even better, especially with that humongous panoramic roof that you see above me. Uh, excellent, excellent. I love the pano roofs. Well done, BMW. It looks fantastic. It gives the cabin a nice open and airy feeling. Very, very nice. Also in the rear seat, you do get dual air vents uh, with three zone climate control, uh, two up front and then one in the back. Um, also, you have an optional uh, peasant blocker, sunshade, that you can put over the side windows. Uh, these are fantastic. My tester does not have it, um, but you are cocooned in exquisite luxury in the back. Also new for 2018 are reclining rear seats. Uh, they don't recline super far, but they do. So, I mean, it's better than nothing, right? 
So actually when you open the trunk, it is a uh, kick gesture activated. It is also kick to close, um, but you can also press the button and press the uh, button on the key as well. Uh, you're met with 28.7 cubic feet of cargo space with the rear seats up. Uh, they do split 40-20-40, uh, and when they're down, they give you about 62.7 cubic feet of storage, which is very, very big. Uh, lots of room for all of the groceries and other family stuff that you need. And then also there's that straight six. <laughs> So moving up front, you are not devoid of luxury. It is not reserved for just the back seats. Up front, you are met with you know, exceedingly nice front seats. They are heated, optionally ventilated, um, and also you have a heated steering wheel. But I do want to talk about the color of this, of this interior. The mocha brown on BMWs is fantastic. It's not too light. It's a nice, dark, rich kind of mahogany feel. Uh, it looks extremely expensive and high quality. The fit and finish is exceptional. There's uh, leather and stitching on the dash. Uh, there's a rhombical kind of insert on your dash. There is a little bit of piano black uh, up front where you are going to select your, your radio presets, uh, but it's not too much. Down by the iDrive control, you don't have piano black, so you're not going to get your fingers everywhere. Again, that's the rhombical kind of insert that they have here. Uh, it is aluminum, so that is actually really nice. It's not plastic either, so well done BMW again. Fit and finish, great job. Now the coolest thing about this X3, aside from the just raw speed and exhaust note, uh, is the technology. And it's something BMW does really well. Uh, they take a lot of flack for it, but they really do bring a lot of new technology to the game. Uh, the best thing that they've done with this is brought what you could consider like a 3D parking assist. Um, some people are calling it augmented reality. I don't think they really you know, want you to call it. It's not exactly that. Uh, but what they do is they have 360 camera. You can get top-down view. You can get a massive front view. You can get a massive rear view. But you can also have a live view of where exactly your car is. And you can kind of flip it around, spin it, uh, so you know exactly where you're at. Obviously, this can only be done at certain speeds. Uh, lower speeds, probably about 10-ish miles an hour. Um, but it actually works really, really well, and it is really cool. Um, so it's really nice to see that kind of innovation from BMW. To get into it, you obviously press the, the parking sensor button once or twice. Um, you also obviously have your camera that you can look at the front and back as well if you don't want the full um, 360 augmented 3D park assist uh, experience. Also one of the things that I like about the 3D park assist and the top down camera is it projects where your door is going to be. If you were open, if you were to open up your door the full length, it will show you exactly how far into the next parking stall your door is going to go. Now this X3 is also chock full of a lot of 7 series trickle down technology. Uh, the gesture control for the radio, you do this and it kind of, I'm trying not to upset the infotainment right now. You can do this for the, the volume control, you can do this to change your uh, radio station. Uh, you can swipe through your digital um, 360 park assist. It's just a lot of kind of gesture controls and it looks really good. It works actually really intuitively well, actually. I'm very uh, pleasantly surprised with, with how well it works. Also other 7 Series kind of trickle down stuff is you can get an optional fragrance kind of mister and cabin uh, air freshener. Also you get illuminated entry at night. Uh, if you're, you leave your car in a parking lot at night, you walk up to it, you unlock it. Um, the side view mirrors will project uh, a light onto the ground. It's not just a BMW logo, it's not the roundel, but it is kind of like a nice almost wing. It's very, it's almost like Greek. It looks kind of cool though, it looks really good. It kind of just welcomes you into the car in a nice graceful and elegant fashion. Also ambient lighting is equipped on this car. It is very subtle, I will say. Uh, I'm driving it mostly during the day, uh, and I do see it, I have it set to purple right now, um, but you can see it in the door sills, uh, within the dash, headliner, everything like that. It looks nice, you have six colors to choose from. Um, so it's not as many as Mercedes, but it is still very nice, and it's not any colors that I would want to have, um, or that I, I don't think there's any colors missing that I would want to have. Now my tester also has a fully digital gauge cluster that is of course customizable uh, as far as what drive mode you're in. Obviously it changes for eco, uh, comfort, and then sport. Sport is the only drive mode that you're going to get a big digital speed number. Uh, you'll get the big tax and everything, um, but Sport is the only one that you're going to have a big digital speed number displayed to you on your left hand side uh, near your boost gauge. Also like I was saying, this infotainment is touch screen. Uh, you can control it to your iDrive wheel, you can write on the top of the iDrive wheel, you can you know, scroll and, 
and write things on there as well. Uh, also, you have gesture control, you have all sorts of stuff. Many different ways that you can control your system. Uh, it is very intuitive, it is very easy to use. Um, so, I think it's it deserves a thumbs up for that. <laughs> One of my only gripes, however, about the infotainment package on this is you get Apple CarPlay uh, as standard. It doesn't connect through a cord, it doesn't connect through Bluetooth, it connects over a Wi-Fi. So think of how you would connect to a GoPro. You don't have to, you know, take up your Bluetooth channel, you can still use Bluetooth for whatever else you need, a headset or whatever, um, but <laughs> it just connects over Wi-Fi. So I like that it doesn't need cords. The Wi-Fi is a little interesting choice, but I think it works. However, you cannot get Android Auto. I believe it's for now, I don't think that's going to be a forever thing, but as of now you can't get Android Auto, which is a little frustrating for me, I have an Android phone, uh, I know the internet, haha, <laughs> you have an Android, you're poor, you're a peasant, blah, blah, blah. It, we're half the population, you know, realistically, let's make something that caters to uh, to us, so that's really my, my main and realistically only complaint about this X3. It's hard to complain when you're going this fast! <laughs> And of course you get safety features in this, like uh, optional active lane keep assist. Um, it, it, is, it can be a little bit intrusive, but it is nice. Um, you do also get full stop adaptive cruise, uh, front and rear cross traffic alert, you know, that's pretty, pretty normal to see. Front collision mitigation, that's pretty standard as well. Uh, but like I said, the park assist and the 360 kind of augmented reality, that's really going to be the coolest thing in this car. You also do get an optional wireless charging pad uh, up in front of your gear lever. Uh, it is not equipped on my tester, but some people have it. Honestly, I don't think I need it. I don't have one of those cases. I don't know. You know, I just don't think I need it. I just really don't. But now let's talk about dynamics. That's why you're all here, right? So this is a family SUV with a straight six, turbocharged. <laughs> this thing is fast as hell. Okay, so <clears throat> journalistic. So this is the same engine that you'll get in a 3 Series, 340i, and a 4 Series, uh, 440i, uh, hence obviously the M40i. This makes 355 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. This also has launch control and you can get 0 to 60 in about 4.6 seconds. To give you some frame of reference, the E46 M3 hailed as one of the greatest automotive accomplishments of all time, 0-60 to 60 in just about 5 seconds. So this is on par, if not a little bit faster, than an M3. As recent as 2006. So yeah, this little truck, this little SUV, is quick. Oh, and it just holds on. Yeah! <laughs> oh my gosh, the suspension tuning is, is fantastic. In sport mode, you really get your suspension to kind of tighten up, the dampers tighten up a little bit. It's so planted in corners. You do get a little top uh, top body roll, I do feel that, um, but it's, it's nothing too bad. I mean, you do have to realize the physics that come with driving an SUV like this. Now, of course, this is a BMW straight six, and as a result, the power comes on Super linearly, whoa, and then you get those pop pops and those crackles and the exhaust. It is a lot more subtle than that Focus RS that I drove last week, however, if you really aren't into the crackles and the pop pops, you can turn it off, you can turn it into comfort mode, you can turn it into eco mode that does away with it. Uh, I love to have it, uh, but you can get rid of it if you so choose. But other than that, I mean, the power is fantastic. This straight six, 355 horsepower, 369 pound-feet of torque plenty for this car. I don't think it really needs much more. Uh, there hasn't been a time where I've been driving this car where I'm like, oh, it needs more power. I need to go faster. This is still an SUV. Like, I'm still higher up in the ground, from the ground. Uh, if I had more power, I would maybe drive it a little too hard. Uh, it might be a little bit too much body roll in corners and I might get a little bit squirrely. So I think for this car, this is a fantastic amount of power. I don't feel like I need more at all. So great job on engine choice BMW. However, I am going to be testing an X5M in the next couple weeks, so we'll see if I change my mind after I drive that one. But no, the power comes on smooth. There is half a second, little bit of hesitation uh, on the low end when you're really, really low in, in the RPMs, pretty much from a standstill, but the turbos spool up and they get you up to speed really, really quick. 
Uh, they kick you right in the back of the head, pretty much from idle. Um, so like I said, you know, really, really minimal, if any, turbo lag. Now wrangling all this power and all this torque is an eight speed sport automatic transmission. Uh, this does a great job. It's super quick, guys. Um, there's never been a time where I've felt like the transmission is keeping me from going faster or changing gears. It's really intuitive. It knows exactly what I want to do. If I wanted to drop a gear, it will do that. Uh, if I wanted to pick one up, I can do that too. Also, I can just switch it over into manual mode, take control of the paddles. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <clears throat> Holy crap. <clears throat> anyway, journalistic, not a child. <laughs> Yeah, so with all this power and this transmission, it is a really nice transmission. It's very, very uh, responsive. It's very intuitive. Everything's fantastic. I love everything right now while driving this car. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> uh, you can get about, you can expect to get about 20 MPG city and 27 highway. Uh, it's not the best, but it's pretty good, especially for all this power. I mean, this is a sports SUV. This is a powerful performance oriented car. Uh, SUV rather so you know you can't expect to get 40 mpg highway. It's not realistic. It's just ridiculous So I think for the size of this vehicle and for the power output. This is a fantastic figure um, You do get uh, three drive modes you do get the sport obviously it's going to be holding your gear a bit higher uh, It'll keep you higher in the revs to keep you having more access to the power uh, keep the turbo spool a little bit longer comfort mode kind of softens everything up um, you know, suspension steering gets a little bit lighter everything like that uh, but then you have eco mode and eco obviously is geared towards giving you better fuel economy so if you're going to care about fuel economy if you're going to take this on long uh, highway trips put it in eco mode you're not going to need to do you know 50 or 30 to 50 highway poles uh, you know you're not going to need to do anything like that also in you know the effort and speaking of you know dynamics and everything this car is equipped with xDrive what does that mean uh, you have all-wheel drive uh, it is a rear bias all-wheel drive you can send f it biases as standard to 40% power up front 60% power in the back while you can also send 100% um, of the power to whichever axle you want front or back so that is fantastic that is what helps this car uh, drive and handle more like a car than an SUV so fantastic job there also uh, they did a little a little bit of work on the diff in the rear uh, made that a little bit lighter handles fantastic um, comparable to the Acura super handling all-wheel drive that I was so intrigued and enticed with um, and really infatuated with after driving on the RDX that I drove the other week so really really good dynamics in terms of handling from this x3 now what can you expect to pay for a car like this well if you want the four-cylinder uh, you want the base car you can expect to get in at about four one thousand uh, dollars if you want the m40i and i do suggest you get into one it is a lot of fun uh, you can expect to pay about 54 5 um, which sounds like a lot of money however when you think about its competitors the mercedes glc that's fifty seven thousand dollars and that has pretty much the exact same power uh, porsche macan s that's 55 4 you know that's less power than this by about 15 uh, and the audi audi sq5 that's 54 as well and that has one less horsepower so it's really not that much money compared to the field it's pretty on par with all of its competitors however this car I know for a fact is a lot faster than the Audi SQ5 so bargain yes absolutely so guys those are my impressions of the BMW X3 M40i thank you again to my friends at International Autos for making this view possible yet again they've taken fantastic care of me they will do the same for you you guys know the spiel check them out they've got like 10 of these things on their lot they are so much fun uh, I had a great time filming this I hope you guys really like this video as always leave a comment subscribe I look forward to seeing you next time bye I'm up and then tumbling down while it's part of the process Guard tabs on a hot night in a cold basement You say I'm crazy, but I feel amazing